Hello everyone. Today we would introduce you Vastu House located in Gokulam area of Mysore, Karnataka. As the name suggests, the entire house was designed to be completely Vastu compliant. Architect Thomas Parambil narrates the design story where the spatial planning of the house revolves around Brahmasthal, which is the central courtyard. To know more about the project story, click on the link mentioned in the description below. It will take you to our website buildofi.com where you can become a member and download the full PDF ebook including the detailed floor plans, section elevation with dimensions and the material palette. You can download 200 plus PDF ebooks of the houses Pan India. Till then, I hope you enjoy this video. Hi, today we are going to be taking you through our version of the Vastu house. This house was conceived for three generations. Our client, who is a second generation businessman from Mysore, his mother, his wife and his two teenage kids. So it was important for us to bring in their liking and taste and put them all together into this one house. Our site is located in the upmarket Gokulam neighborhood of Mysore. It's a 70 by 70 square plot with houses on all three sides. And towards the north, we have a nicely laid out road and a large number of fully grown trees which forms an important part of the neighborhood. Keeping in mind the client's desire to have a fully Vastu compliant house, the positioning of all rooms in this house are in total sync to the Vastu Purusha Mandala. The entrance to the site is from the northeast quadrant. Our design program on this 4,900 square feet plot started off by having an entrance from the northeast. The house has two main entrances, a vehicular entry and a pedestrian entry. The pedestrian entry takes you straight into a water body. You enter from the east. The foyer furniture is a combination of wood and metal. It's got this beautiful blueprints which is carried on to the rug. The backdrop of the foyer is this water body. The wood and metal furniture is carried on to the living room. You see the beautiful center table made of wood and metal. From the foyer, you open out into the double height. The Brahmasthana of the house is left open with a beautiful skylight, also playing with the volume. It has a strong visual connect to the dining space as well. The puja room sits in the east quadrant with an entry from the east. The kitchen is in the southeast quadrant and the master bedroom is in the southwest quadrant. The southwest corner of the master bedroom is the wardrobe, which is the Kubera Mula. The west side has a staircase core and the living room. In between the living room and the staircase core is a powder room. The public and the private activities on the ground floor are separated by the courtyard. The living room has multiple layers of buffer from the main road. The living room has a brown and beige palette sitting against the bold yellow of the Jaisalmir. The whole furniture is tied up by a beautiful hand knotted rug. The painting on the wall complements the rug. A very strong visual connectivity is established between the living space and the dining space. It is also partially covered by a metal screen in the same color of the Jaisalmir. From the double height of the courtyard, a black kadapa stepping stone connects you to the dining area. Once you reach the dining area, you come into a 9 feet height ceiling again. The dining area has this beautiful square 8 seater table and a wooden ceiling on the top. The puja wall forms a backdrop to the dining area. It has beautiful inlays of Jaisalmir within white marble. The first floor houses three bedrooms and a media room. A corridor wraps the courtyard. Towards the north side is a large open veranda facing the road. 
contradictory to what otherwise would have been a very traditional approach we decided to give this house a very modern touch architecturally the facade is mostly a combination and a play of straight lines the north face is kept open with multiple layers in terms of jali and screens and a nice open window to the north facade responding to the trees of the streetscape the linearity of the site is accentuated. We've gone with two horizontal lines, which is the most important element in the facade. We have a screen jali coming on the ground floor towards the west side, and we have a metal jali coming on the first floor towards the east side. A nice open veranda wraps the media room on the north facade. The interiors are bold and beautiful with its yellow jaisalmer natural stone, white walls and hints of greys and blues. On the ground floor, we have the mother's bedroom. For the mother's bedroom, we've stuck to very earthy colours. We have the burgundy backdrop standing against a green motive wall. We've picked out arches of the Haveli and then large motive floral patterns. This bedroom is a combination of bold colours with subtle pinks and peaches. The son's bedroom is a bold design. It has a platform bed made of wood on site and a backdrop in cement finish beige. Very earthy tone again. A strip light runs from the back panel to the bed platform on the walls and back on the ceiling. The master bedroom has a large ribbed headboard in bold green sitting against the grey. A beautiful balcony wraps the media room. The flooring of the balcony is a combination of polished and river finish kota. We have used mostly pastel shades for the daughter's bedroom. So it's a printed green fabric on a green wall. The banana fiber hanging light helps in bringing a lot of warmth into the entire space. And the greys help the whole thing tie up. This project in total was a great learning for us. Be it the vastu aspect, the materials used, the spatial planning and the overall outcome of the facade. Having such a rigid program, our clients were pretty amused and thrilled by the factor that we managed to bring in so much of light and air into the space.